All right, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World. We are live in Las Vegas, and we're bringing you the wall-to-wall, end-to-end coverage, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all day. Uh, you've been a great audience. We really appreciate your feedback. You can, you can tweet me at, at DVellante, uh, at Furrier is John Furrier, and, uh, and we're here with Stephen Manley, who's the CTO of the EMC BRS division. This is the future of data protection spotlight here at EMC World. And we're also joined by David Floyer, who is Wikibon's CTO. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Thanks very much. Yeah, this is uh, Stephen. You're a three time now uh, Cube alum. I think I'd start to get the hang of this. Yeah, we, we first met last year at, uh, at VMworld, you know, talking about a lot of the changes that virtualization uh, had brought, particularly around, around backup, and we talked about at Oracle Open World a few weeks later, you know, some, you know, our man specificity is a little different world than Oracle, and then some time has lapsed. At that time, we talked about um, concepts, new concepts that, um, you started to talk today about in your keynote. I heard you had a great keynote. Unfortunately, we were broadcasting, so I could see you. I couldn't hear you. But so, why don't you bring us up to date on, you know, what's new, what's changed since we last talked, and maybe give us some highlights of your keynote. So I, I think you know if you, if you really to hit on you know what's changed since we last talked, a, a lot of it's remained the same, right? You know, the backup pressures remain the same. I've got increasingly painful backup windows, recovery windows. I need to find techniques that are going to help me uh, help me reach those windows. A lot of that's remained the same. You know, disk continues to expand. I think faster than most people expected, and uh, and we're seeing more and more users who want visibility and control into their backups, like we talked about at Oracle. You know, DBAs wanting to to run their own backups. So so a lot of that's remained constant. Uh, I think two of the big changes or, or accelerations that we've seen. One is a lot more of people. I'd say not just displacing tape with disk, but really replacing tape with disk and going for fully tapeless infrastructure. And I think the second one is more and more you know, people really trying to get control over their backup infrastructure. So I'd say trend-wise, those are two of the biggest shifts is that uh, we've seen a real acceleration in those two areas. So tapeless, so I know David's you know, gonna, gonna challenge you on this, so I'll, I'll set it up. So. Tapeless for backup, correct? Tapeless That's for really backup. What we mean. So it's just tape still around for archive. Um, it, yeah, and yeah. Maybe disaster recovery. Yeah, though, though, though even then we've seen, uh, I'd say, an increasing shift, uh, especially you know in the, in the disaster recovery space. I think we've seen an increasing shift away from tape. Uh, and then on the archive space, I think uh, you know there was a wave where you know archival platforms like the Centera came out and took a chunk out of tape. I think we're seeing a second wave in terms of archive with things like the data domain extended retention. So I think more aggressive is, is, is removing tape for backup, but you're starting to see it even in the disaster recovery in the archive space as well. You know, I showed this slide and the setup, and David Floyd, I don't know if you could see it, uh, but so this is, this is IDC data on the purpose-built backup appliance market. This is terabytes in this axis and revenue in that axis. Everything's up and to the right. This little line here is the approximate size of the tape market. Right. Now, I was astounded because I assumed that purpose-built backup appliances could never be bigger than the TAM for tape. That set the ceiling. It didn't work out that way. Right. Why is that? I, I think a lot of it has to do with you know, the pain in backup. Again, what drives the backup industry, you know, first and foremost, is I can't get my backups done, I can't recover my data. And, and that gets in the way of other business processes. It gets in the way of virtualization, it gets in the way of application consolidation and refreshment, it gets in the way of what people are trying to do with their storage infrastructure. And you know, if that's your main backup pain, and the only way you can solve it is to start to move to disk, then the disk market's going to surpass the tape market. Because in the end, the tape market was just a vehicle, a medium for how you did backup and protection. The protection is the core of what people are really trying to do with their data. Well, the irony is people, you know, started doing the purpose-built backup appliance because they thought, you know, deduplication started to change the economics. Hey, we can save a bunch of money. It never got cheaper than tape, but it got close enough, and then just overwhelmed the market for backup, didn't it? Yeah, though, though I, I think I think if you look at a lot of the environments, if if you look at it end to end, we've got customers who are showing. And, and I think you're talking to one soon uh, after me, Loomis, that showed an ROI on their disk investment that, that showed that they were saving money versus their tape infrastructure in a fairly rapid period of time. So you know, when you take into account all the factors that go into to backup, it's, it's not just the hard cost, but also the soft cost as well. You know, disk, disk appliances can actually, for backup, show a serious ROI 
in, in, in some cases, six months or less. So handling the media, the processes around it, the labor intensity, all of that, when you take a full TCO, uh, you can make that business case very, Absolutely. very well. Now, David Floyer, you listened uh, to Stephen Manley's uh, uh, keynote discussion, and you yeah. said, you said, I think, you know, roughly quoting, uh, I'll paraphrase, uh, uh, this was, that was the best uh, uh, and most cogent presentation I'd heard on backup in a long time. What was it that you liked so much about that talk? And then we can uh, get into it with in, Stephen. In, in particular from, from BRS, yes. Um, what I thought you tackled for the first time was the, the, the addressing fully of the emerging technologies from Oracle, from, uh, from VMware with CBT, from snapshots, all sorts of snapshots, uh, yes. both software and hardware as the, if effectively the only way of being able to solve the backup window issue right. and to be able to give specificity, uh, application consistency to back to the applications and, and drive, uh, drive it as a service. Um, and uh, the analogy you started to give or you half gave was uh, a time machine, um, which we all know and maybe love sometimes. <laughs> as much as you can love any backup <laughs> product, right? Um, uh, so uh, is that a shift in the way that you're going to market? You emphasize Avamar a lot. Uh, you obviously have got a very rich uh, investment with things like Net, uh, Network, all the other products right. that you have. Is that a shift towards that model? And are you going to adapt those products to reflect that model? So, so I, I think there's a definite shift in the model. I, I think that, that that old world backup of, I install a client and I set a schedule and I read all the data and I put it in a proprietary format and I, I, I send it across multiple networks through multiple devices just to get a copy somewhere. I, I think that model it's an antiquated model. Yeah, I mean, and, and, whether it's disk yeah. or tape doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just, yeah. it's a model that's not going to scale. So right. so what you're seeing is you're seeing us trying to integrate yeah, yeah, the things that own the data, the hypervisor, right. the storage stack, the application, they really have the tools and techniques to actually allow me to get backups done faster. And so yeah, you're going to see us really adopt to a model that says, look, you know, we want to make sure you get backups done the fastest way possible, and we want to give you centralized management of that, and where appropriate, we obviously want to sell you the backend storage for that. But it really is all about, you know, it's, it's, it's again, that, that model of, Process. I'm the backup team, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to deliver services, and you know, I can't give you a one-size-fits-all anymore. I've got to use the techniques that work for, for my end users and for my consumers. And, and work for the workload. Absolutely. Uh, appropriate. So Absolutely. VMware, Avamar is obviously appropriate. Right. You've got Oracle, you're going to have to use Armand. Oh, yeah. and, and, so. and, and as you move into a world of snapshots, you know sometimes that's going to be simply managing snapshot replication policies. Right. So are you going to put in the catalogs for those snapshots and replications into your database products? Is that so, so, so that, that is in fact, I think if you look at the evolution of backup software, I think that's probably, again, you sort of look at a traditional backup system today and you say, all right, as a backup software vendor, I've got some value in sort of the storage node, media server, whatever you want to call it. I've got some value in my proprietary clients, and then I've got some value in the management stack. I think as we see the market evolve, more and more of the value is really going to be in the brains. It's going to be in that management stack, and then that, the, that, that bit that does the application intelligence. And that's where you're going to see us focus, and that's going to be about the reporting, the policy management, and the catalog. The catalog, I think, it's is the key. anchor. Absolutely the key. anchor as you yeah. go forward, because it's not just going to be about backup either, it's going to be about archive, it's going to be... Recovery, it's exactly. a single source of data. It's, it's, it's yeah. that source of truth. And, yeah. and as you look at where backup software is going to be in five years, I think we're going to be drawing our differentiations based on the catalog, because the data movement's going to be embedded in other parts yeah, of the stack. Right. I, I, that's why I found it exciting today, and that's the first time I've really heard from EMC an articulation of that model. And we're seeing it in the lower end yeah. with uh, things from NetApp and things, so, you know, little yeah. fringe products here and there. Yeah. Not, I mean, good products, but in, in the lower end. They're the side-load pieces. Yes, yeah. and so they're proving, proving, the bus they're proving the model and the business case for it. Right. So that's exciting that you're bringing that to the market as a whole. That's, that's very exciting. Uh, it's, it's, and, and you know, obviously as my background, I, I was a long-time NetApp guy who worked on the, the SnapVault, SnapMirror products. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, really critical part of the market and I think what, what we want to do at EMC and why I joined EMC is the ability to take 
that particular part of the model and expand it to all layers of the stack. Like right. I said, the VMware layer, the Oracle layer, not just that one-off storage layer. And, and the other thing I found very exciting was your, your concept of, uh, let me get my notes here, was it data invulnerability architecture? Right. Um, is that something, I mean, you applied it to disk, and right. obviously you don't have many tape products, so you wouldn't. But what, it, it, could you talk more about it? And why couldn't you apply that just as much, if necessary, to the tape, to tape. or for the areas where it's appropriate? So, so I, I think, you know, in some sense, you know, the data and vulnerability architecture, or, or at least the methodologies behind it, you really should have those uh, across your environment, whether it's disk or tape or some That's other media in the future. Yes, yes, yeah. um, and, and if you look in the traditional tape model, backup formats have done things to try to be more robust in the face of tape yeah. failures, whether it's inserting checksums and headers, yeah. or it's it's putting headers in two locations on the Insert, tape so you can be right. resilient to yeah. media failure. Yeah. I think with disk, with disk it just gives me the opportunity to do a little bit more because the data is yeah. online sure. and spinning. But, but you know, it, it really takes that model that a lot of us had in the tape market, and it says, now we can do more of what we wanted to do that you couldn't do, because you couldn't just constantly be spinning your tape, right. scrubbing data. Um, but, but, and that, that for, I think the data domain team especially, they grew up with that as a model. I think as they've started to, to work more closely with the networker team on data formats and long-term data retention, yeah, the networker team actually brings a lot of value to bear in that discussion because as well. Of the, because of the catalogs and because of their knowledge of everything going on. And, yeah. and, and because yeah. of their experience with their version of exactly. data and vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think you know, we highlighted one particular aspect of data and vulnerability, but, but yeah, we, we, you know, we, we could go on for hours about it. Because again, ultimately, as a backup vendor, I can do everything fast, but if it doesn't come back at the end, it doesn't really matter. Backup is one thing. Recovery is everything. Matters. Recovery is <laughs> everything. Yeah. And so um, now we had B.J. Jenkins on this morning, Stephen. He was talking about this notion, and I think he's indicated that you put it. You were the first one to put it forth. Was that, and you might have just alluded to it just a minute ago, is that it was software that was very sticky, right. historically, and that's starting to change. And I presume if you start to think about a an, a new architecture of of, of of data protection, where you're using you know CDP and you've got a more holistic view end to end. There's still a lot of software in there, Snapshot. Yeah, but it changes the backup application as the yes. sort of tail wagging the, the data protection dog. Right. Can you talk about that a little bit and then we got a break? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so I think, I think what happens is and is already happening in the market is you can look at it and say, all right, you know, because I have different data movement techniques. And you know, because it's it's more snapshot or CDP style oriented or, or however you want to look at it, you know, one of the things that's shifting is we're doing more and more of storing data in their native formats, which gets rid of that vendor lock-in from software. I have, I have seven years of historical tapes in a proprietary format. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of my backup application because you bought me seven years ago, but I own your data, right? And, and more and more shifting towards keeping data in native format so you don't get that lock-in. And I think that's good because now it lets you start to go best of breed. Second piece is again the data movement stops to you know, starts to be again more open and, and heterogeneous because you're you're seeing it at different layers, and again the stickiness in the backup software stack is really going to come down to who has the best backup catalog and management interface, and I think that's less sticky than the old model because again I don't have seven to ten years of historical tapes that's keeping you locked into me, but there's still the stickiness of if I have the best product and I can help you find all your data, you're still going to want me. So software is still relevant. But I think, again, the value chain and what it's delivering is shifting a little bit, much more to, again, being that brains of the outfit. Stephen Manley, putting forth the vision. When we first met you, you're relatively new to EMC. It's obviously you got your fingerprint now on the, on the vision, the division. Congratulations on a great keynote talk, and thanks very much for coming inside the Cube. Always good to see you, Dave. Appreciate it. Appreciate good to see it. you. And uh, so keep it right there. We've got Bill Holmes, the VP of IT Infrastructure at Loomis, coming up next. He's going to give us the practitioner's perspective. This is the Future of Data Protection Spotlight. We're here live at EMC World. Keep it right there. We'll be right back.